Hi, Brent Tech here, where tech is made simple. So Microsoft is now busy finalizing our next optional bug fix C release update for Windows 11 24H2 KB5060829 with insiders in the release preview channel. So because it's in its final stages of testing, I would suggest that next week sometime we will see 24H2's next optional update rollout to the general public. Now, once again, with the bug fix updates, Microsoft takes the opportunity to start pushing out new features. So for this next update, if you do decide to install it, according to Microsoft, there are 12 new features, all of which are rolling out gradually. So the features and improvements and fixes I'm going to mention now, you may or may not see them if you decide to install the optional update, because it is just that, an optional update when it rolls out in, an, in the next couple of days. Now, the first new feature is for app defaults. And Microsoft says it's rolling out some small changes in the EEA region for default browsers via the set default button in settings apps, default apps. So I'm not in the EEA, so just to mention these. Additional file and link types will be set for the new default browser if it registers them. That's number one. Number two, the new default browser will be pinned to the taskbar unless you choose not to pin it by clearing the checkboxes. And number three, there is now a separate one-click button for browsers to change your .pdf default if the browser registers for the .pdf file type. So those are three app default improvements rolling out in the EEA region with this next update. And then the next new feature is about, Microsoft says the taskbar now resizes icons to fit more apps when space runs low. So you can adjust how icons appear in settings. So how you would do that is you would just right click taskbar settings, taskbar behaviors, and when it does roll out in this section, you'll be able to adjust how icons appear in settings as mentioned. So basically reduce icon size only when the taskbar is full. That'll be the default option. Keep icons at the original size at all times by selecting never or use smaller icons all the time by selecting always. And I actually think that's a nice move in the right direction. And by the way, most of these features I have posted on when they were in early preview. So if you want more in-depth info, just do a search accordingly on the channel. And then the next new feature is Microsoft says that in addition to the new grouping on the accessibility menu in quick settings, there will now be text descriptions for the assistive technologies like narrator, voice access, and more for easier identification and learning. And I think that's a move in the right direction. And then the next new feature is they are adjusting the indicator pull. So that's that little dot or line that you see under apps, they're making it wider and more visible on the taskbar, which I actually think is a nice move. And then just to mention two fixes, Win and Control and Number, Microsoft says, didn't work anymore for switching windows of an open app in the taskbar. That has been fixed. And when using taskbar in windows, the media controls that appear in the preview windows for apps might unexpectedly flicker. And then for Windows Share, we get two new features. I'm just going to mention these. When you share links or web content using the Windows Share window, you will see a visual preview for that content. I think that's a nice move. And once again, in the Windows Share window, you can now select a compression level, high, medium, or low quality when editing sharing images instead of selecting from a 0 to 100 scale. I also think that's a nice move. Now, here's one I've posted on just the other day. PC migration. Microsoft says it's beginning to roll out a new PC to PC migration in Windows. You'll start to see the landing and the pairing page in the Windows Backup app. So this is going to be part of the Windows Backup app. I have posted on this just the other day. Just go check the video out if you want more info, which Microsoft says will give you a first look at what's coming. In the full experience, you'll be able to transfer your files and settings from your old PC to the new one during the PC setup process. Support during the PC setup will be available in a future update 
and we are releasing this in phases for a smooth experience and will provide more details soon. So that's rolling out basically in three or four stages, but check the video out for more info. And then just to mention the next for File Explorer, there's an improvement where performance has been enhanced when extracting archive files. This will particularly help in the case of copy pasting large numbers of files out of large 7z or .rar archives. I think that's a nice move. And then Narrator, which is an accessibility feature, will be getting two new features. Which I'm always in favor of for accessibility. There will be a new screen curtain feature in Narrator that helps protect your privacy and improve focus by blacking out the screen while Narrator reads content aloud. This is especially helpful in public or shared spaces where you can work with sensitive information without others seeing your screen. And the next new feature is Narrator makes it easier to discover and learn about its features directly now within the actual Narrator experience. And then for voice access, which is also an accessibility feature, there are two new features. You can now use voice access to navigate, dictate and interact with Windows using voice commands in simplified Chinese and traditional Chinese. And you can add custom words to the dictionary in voice access. The feature will be available in all the currently supported voice access languages. And I think that's a nice move. And for settings, there are two new features. The first is the settings homepage on PCs managed by IT admins now includes cards tailored for enterprise use. These include familiar options like recommended settings and Bluetooth devices along with two cards for device info and accessibility preferences. And if we head over to our language and region page in settings, Microsoft says it's added the country or region selected during device setup under settings, time and language, language and region. And here's a small little niggly issue that Microsoft is sorting out. If we head to the system about page, Microsoft says that the storage card in settings system about shows an incorrect or unreadable character instead of the proper disk size. That's also been fixed. So that's quite an important little UI fix. And then there are three windowing fixes. Just going to mention these quickly. When you alt and tab out of a full screen game, other windows like Windows Terminal might stop responding. There was an underlying issue that might lead to unexpected window size and position changes after sleeping, resuming from some, for some devices, that's been fixed. And explorer.exe, which is the shell, so that would be your taskbar, file explorer, start menu, and so on, might stop working unexpectedly when dragging a window if window snapping is enabled. So that's quite an important fix. And then there is one improvement and two fixes for graphics. The improvement is Microsoft says it's made some underlying changes to help improve display-related user experiences, including reducing screen flashing in some display configuration transitions and removing unnecessary display resets, which was happening in some cases. Then the, the first fix for graphics is certain displays might be unexpectedly green. I think that's quite important. And there's a fix for user account control warnings, um, UAC, which is taking place under the hood. And then if we head to our settings accessibility color filters if you are using this feature there is an improvement where microsoft has adjusted the location of the intensity and color boost sliders under settings accessibility color filters so the color previews at the top of the page are visible while adjusting these sliders i think that's quite a nice little important user interface tweak and then just to mention three fixes Typing Japanese with a touch keyboard may stop working after switching to typing with an English keyboard and back. That's been fixed. Printed lines might be unexpectedly thicker than expected. That's been fixed. And some apps like Sticky Notes and DX Dog might stop working when the display language is set to Arabic or Hebrew. Now all those new features and fixes are going to be rolling out gradually with the next optional update. And then rolling out normally, I'm just going to mention four fixes that I think are important. And this will be rolling out normally because this is a bug fix update. 
They've improved the Copilot's key's reliability and resolved an issue that prevented users from restarting Copilot after using the key that's been fixed. There was an issue that prevented unused language packs and feature-on-demand packages from being fully removed, which led to unnecessary storage use and longer Windows update installation times. That's been fixed, and that's quite important, especially if you were experiencing longer Windows update times. And then for Windows Search, the last two just to mention, apparently Windows Search responds very slowly the search box can take over 10 seconds to load before you can use it that's quite an important fix so that's been fixed and then the update enhances the reliability of windows search and resolves an issue that prevented users from typing in windows search in some cases so that's also an important fix so that's more or less guys what to expect with our next optional bug fix c release update that will be rolling out over the next couple of days as mentioned kb5060829 so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.